to provide an additional welcome. I'm Kathleen Tierney, um, and on behalf of uh, Morocco Nakano, I'm a, a, who's the co-director of faculty uh, development. I wanted to welcome you here um, for the Center of Teaching and Learning and Scholarship workshop um, with Chris and Beth from, um, from Mathematics. So we're so glad to have her here, um, and thank you all for coming, and I'll turn it over to Chris. Kathleen, Carl, everybody, thank you guys for coming. What I plan to do today is something really laid back and formal. I want to show you sort of what I know about Google Classroom, which certainly isn't everything, but I've spent a couple of years playing around with it, so I know a lot of stuff about it. Um, and I'm all, I also want to show you some other things that you can do with Google products um, in the classroom and, in, you know, outside of the classroom and teaching in general. So um, before we do that, these are the tabs that you want to have open on your laptop or iPad or whatever. Um, Gmail, Google Drive, Google Calendar, and then Google Classroom. Um, I think almost everybody has a laptop. If you, have a, if you have a tablet or an iPad, there are apps for each of these. Uh, you can get them, download them very quickly. Um, the URL for Google Classroom is just classroom.google.com. If you've never used it, um, well, it, it might show up as some blank you know, welcome page. Um, what's really important is you need to be signed into your St. Mary's Google account to even access Classroom. Um, it's an app that's only open to people with, I think it's called Google for Education accounts, and St. Mary's is one of those institutions. Uh, so you won't be able to access it with your personal uh, Gmail account. Um, so make sure you're signed into St. Mary's. You'll go here, you might see a screen uh, that doesn't quite look like that. Um, but what I'm going to do, so those of you who RSVP before um, early this morning, I've added you into um, a list, and what I'm going to do, see these are all my, all my contacts, so I've made a list called, did I get that acronym right? Center for Teaching, Learning, and Scholarship? Okay, okay. <laughs> good. Um, so I've added a list, so there it is, I'm going to select all, this is something you would do with your student list, for example, um, I'm going to select everyone, and then invite. So if you are on that list, you are getting an invitation soon. If you're already in Google Classroom, it might show up that you've been added. If not, you're just going to enter this as your um, class code, and it's also right here. I've written it bigger. BLV7C2. Uh, so just add that, and you'll be added to the class. Make sure you add yourself as a student and not an instructor. Okay? So now you can see, from, this is from the teacher's viewpoint, um, it looks like a lot of people are invited but have not accepted yet, Nick is the only one that well, he added himself, okay there we go. Um, so as, as the students start to accept your request, the invited goes away, until it goes away there's nothing that you can do to communicate with them through classroom. Okay, so this has happened to me before where I've sent invitations out to students and they're sort of lazy about it. And if they don't accept the invitation, um, there's nothing you can do but send them emails or talk to them in person about it. Okay? So I'll let you guys um, go ahead and accept that. And also, real quick, if you have any questions at all, feel, please feel free to shout out or raise your hand if you want to be formal. Um, feel free to stop me. Okay? Okay, so there are a number of you that still have invitations out. Is anybody having trouble adding it? It's just a lot of work. I'm going to be looking at it. Oh, okay. Because you're, yeah, you're not on a laptop, are you? Okay. Um, does everybody know how to make a contact list in Google? Okay, let me just real quick. Um, so from, from an email, Page from the Gmail page. If you go to contacts, um, this is the list that I already imported, but if you want to import a new list, and this is what I do at the beginning of every semester, I'll wait till the add drop period is over, so my list of students is pretty accurate, and then I'll go, uh, I think the best way to get a, a roster of your students in a spreadsheet format is to actually do it from Moodle. I don't think that there's a way to do it from um, Gale Express, to my knowledge. So you go to Moodle, and you actually go to yeah, export grades or something like that. Um, so you would export grades, even if they don't have any grades, and it'll export um, a comma-separated value file, a CSV file, of your students' names and then some other extraneous information that you don't need. That's the file that you can upload now to Gmail for contacts. So um, the way I did this was I clicked more and then import, 
and then it'll ask you which file do you want, and then make sure it's a CSV file, it won't just take a regular Excel file, okay? Make sure it's the right format, and then you import that file, and um, then you'll have your list of contacts here, and you can rename it, is what, what I did. It'll show up as, um, the name will be imported, and then it'll have the date, and I just changed the name of it. And once it's here, once it's here, um, well, is that gonna be okay right there? Can I get rid of it? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, it'll hide itself. Oh, it'll hide itself? Okay, sure. that's fine. Yeah, or I think that guy hides it too. Oh, wonderful. Go. Okay. Um, so the reason for doing this, and this is a really good thing to do at the beginning of every semester, you're going to be using lots of Google products um, for teaching. Make yourself, make yourself a, a contact list for each of your courses. And that way it's really easy to share stuff with your students. You can just type in whatever the, um, the contact list name is. Just like I did in classroom, okay? So anyway, we're in classroom. Um, so those of you who are here, there are three tabs at the top. Even if you're a student, you can see each of these. Um, in the stream, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview real quick of what's here. In the stream, um, there are some things posted here. Uh, the first one is sort of like an inner, you know, welcome. I always post something like this to my students. Welcome to this class. Here are some things you might need for the first day or, or something like that, okay? But these are some resources that might be helpful for you guys who have never seen Google Classroom before. Um, this is a, a nice little promotional video. Um, and then this page is actually really helpful. It's, a, it's actually a Google page, um, and it has lots of support links for various um, issues that you might have with Google Classroom. And then the last one, I think, is another uh, video that has some support uh, type things in there, okay? Now, this is not the best place to put something like a syllabus. If you want to put a syllabus on, on a classroom, put it over here in the About section. Now, again, this is the teacher view, um, so you'll see stuff that you probably don't see on your student side. Um, but you can put the classroom name if you wanted to. Uh, I'll talk about calendar and drive in a minute. Um, down here is where you're going to add materials. So if you want to put your syllabus up there or rubrics or, or something like that, uh, you can put them here. You just title it, you know, syllabus. Um, you can either attach the file if you um, if it's not on Google Drive, or if you've composed it on Google Drive, there's a nice link um, to add it from there. Uh, you can also add various other things, URLs and YouTube videos. Um, and you can add as many resources as you want. Um, I will say one, uh, one slightly annoying thing about Classroom uh, is it's not easy to rearrange these, these uh, items. So let's say you've added a syllabus, a rubric, um, you know, a schedule of, of topics, things like that, and you want the syllabus to be at the top. If you've added it first, it's at the bottom, and there's no way to sort of pick it up and move it. That is really annoying, and I've complained about it. I don't know if it's going to get fixed anytime soon, but um, just be aware of that. Okay, so you'll notice here that um, there is a link for a Google Drive folder and uh, a calendar. So, if you have your Google Drive tab open, go to Drive, go to Google Drive, and I'll go to my Google Drive. So, if you go to my Drive, do you see Classroom, a folder called Classroom? You do? Does anybody not see a folder called Classroom? This is something that's automatically created by Classroom. You don't have to yeah. do this. Um, so, if you click on it, or open it, you're, you're going to see a folder for the workshop. And you'll also see folders for each of the courses that you've created in Classroom. Um, now, all of the files um, that uh, you upload to Classroom will end up in this file as assignments. I don't think, like, if you upload a syllabus, it won't end up here. Okay, um, this is what, there, there are lots of pros to Google Classroom, in my opinion there are also a few cons, and one of them is this folder is a little bit deceptive. Um, I've been told and kind of found out the hard way, you shouldn't move this directory around. Uh, you shouldn't pick up the classroom folder and put it somewhere else. Like I have a teaching folder in my drive, and I thought, well I'm going to put that in my teaching folder, because that's where it should go. It's not a good idea because, you know, for some reason Google doesn't know where to find it now. Is it okay. in the shared with me or in your drive? Um, it should be in your in my drive. Are you logged into your your SMC account? Mm -hmm. 
did you accept that you were okay with classroom? You had access to that? Mm -hmm. you see? Okay, You're welcome. Can you tell what the issue is? Okay. All right. So, um, anyway, so you should leave it there. Leave it where it is. Um, and you'll notice from my end, there's a bunch of stuff here. If you click on it, what can you see in your class in, in the um, in the workshop folder? Check in. So, okay, there's a check in file, there's like Google Docs file, because of the fact that if we go back to the workshop, uh, the uh, workshop classroom page in the stream. If we scroll down a bit, you'll see a check in, and here's your first assignment. It's really easy. So. Um, what you want to do is go ahead and open this file on your end. I think if you click it, it'll just open it up. And the name of the file should have your name on it. It should say check in and it should have your name. Does everybody see that? Can we, can we open it in either classroom or on Drive? Uh, yes, you can open it in either. Um, I think, from my recollection, it's from a student's point of view, if you open it in Drive and do it, you might forget to turn it in, okay? So you have to actually submit the, the assignment. So if you open it in, in Google Drive, like if you saw it there, you're a student, you're in your Google Drive, you see, oh, there's a new assignment here, you go ahead and do it. And you know, Google Drive saves everything as you're typing, so there's no need to save. You close the browser window and you're done. But you forgot to turn the assignment in, okay? If you do it in classroom, if you open it in classroom, I think it, it opens it. It opens another browser window, doesn't it? In your uh, a docs window. Yeah. Hello. Um, you'll need to go back and submit. Okay. So go ahead and do that. There's 13 of you, and you can see. I can see that no one's done it. <laughs> you guys are slackers. <laughs> you know, wait till the deadline, right? Um, so just it doesn't really matter what you put so here. So go back to the work. You just click on uh, on the student view. You're going to click on. Uh, there's a, a should be a link for checking. Go to the classroom. Where's your check-in once they're in the? Yeah, you should, they should be able to just open it. Under what? Under what? Oh, it's under stream. stream. Under yeah, stream. under stream. You're going to scroll down, and it should be the second item in the stream. And you'll notice, you know, from the teacher's point of view, you can see how many students have done it already. Um, this is kind of handy because if it's the day before it's due, you don't even have to open it and see who's done it. You can just see, oh, hardly anyone's done it. You can make an announcement in class. I notice that you guys haven't done the assignment yet. Remember, it's due tonight. You know. So how do you get it? Because it's still open on in my Word document. So did you finish typing into it? Go back to classroom, or just get just close out that page. Yeah, it's already saved. Okay, yeah, that's really right. this is really nice because it's completely integrated, okay. and, and then I have to <laughs> since Drive is saving as you type, you can just close it when you're done. But you do have to make sure you click submit or turn in. <coughs> drive. From Drive. Yeah. To turn in. Oh, it is from Drive. Okay. Open Drive and then turn it in. Wonderful. Okay, so this is something that changed recently. Turn in your word. Okay. Excellent. And what I like to do, if I'm going to use Classroom for a particular course, I let the first week sort of be a soft week for grading. You know, if they if they screw up, can't figure out how to how to maneuver the system or how to turn things in, I won't you know necessarily give them a zero for an assignment that doesn't doesn't uh, get handed in. I'll give them an extension or something. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and click on the done. So from, this is the teacher's window. If I click on 11 done, what it's going to do is it's going to populate all of the papers that are turned in or whatever. These are all the ones that are turned in. You can see they're uh, it says done in green. If they've been turned in late, it'll say late in red. So kind of a flag to you. This person has turned their work in, but it's late. Maybe you wanted to penalize them. Um, and you scroll all the way down, and it looks like Everyone's turned it in. Oh, one person hasn't, but uh, oh, I think if you click on it, it shows who hasn't done it. Ted. <laughs> 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 so, 
Um, now you might want to know how to grade these things, right? Um, the default is that they're each worth 100 points, and I think this seems a little bit steep for this assignment, so I'm just going to change it. Um, maybe, maybe this should only be worth 10 points. So, yeah, uh, so it gives you a little confirmation. Are you sure you want to update the point value? You say either yes or no. So now we know this thing's only worth 10 points. And, you know, I can, do you guys mind if I click on these? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to click on Shawnee's and um, maybe as I'm grading this in the browser, which is most likely what you're going to be doing, um, so would like to expand, so I might double click on this and make a comment. So I'm going to, I always forget how to do this. Oh, editing, I want to. Uh, like comment, 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 that guy. Comment, okay. comment. And I'm just going to put how. Okay, and so when you go to open this up, when you when it, after it's graded, you'll see all of my comments. Okay, um, and then you know I don't have to save this or anything. I just close it out, um, and I can do that with each of these. Okay, so let's suppose they're all graded. Oh, and then I'm going to go over here and say Shawnee gets a ten. That was excellent. Um, and the rest of them, well, I'm just going to return them all. So they're not graded, but let's pretend we graded them. We enter the grades here. Um, select the names that you want to return the assignments to. Okay. I like to wait till they're all graded and then return them all at once. I don't want to return assignments to some students but not others. Um, so I'll wait until they're all graded. But I don't have to do it all at once. I can assign. I can you know grade for half an hour, um, and then you can tell what you've graded and what you haven't. As long as you know you put a grade here um, once you have put comments on the actual paper. Okay. So I have everything graded. It's all ready to go. I'm going to click return. Um, and now what, what I'm allowed to do is add private comments. And I think, see, this is another thing that's been updated very recently. Let's see here. If I click on individual names. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is maybe not the best part, place to add a private comment because who is this private comment going to? <laughs> is it going to everyone? Uh, what I like to do, let me cancel out of this, um, if I click on Shani's name, right here, you'll see a link to her paper if you wanted to open it, and down here you can add a private comment. So I'm going to put good job and um, post. Now, I think you should be able to see this immediately. Can you see it on your end? The fact that you have a comment. Yes. Okay. I uh, notice that I have not returned anything yet, so you don't have a grade yet, but you have a comment. So what? Sometimes what I'll do is um, maybe maybe you didn't follow the instructions quite the way I wanted you to, and so I'll say um, it looks like you uploaded the wrong file or you answered the wrong question. Why don't you try again, sort of to give you a second shot? Okay. Um, or what you can do is you can return all of the papers, return them all at once. So let me go ahead and do that. I return all of them. Return. So all of you should get a paper return. Um, and it has to take for a minute. And then I might go and add comments. If you want them to maybe get the comments after they get the grades. Okay. And now um, another thing is you can private comment to your teacher. Okay. As a student. Uh, so. And I'm not, since I'm not a student, I can't quite see where that is. Can you tell where it is? Yeah. On the bottom. So somebody sent a private comment so we can see what it looks like up here. I just sent you one. Okay. <laughs> this is another thing students can do. And this is useful sometimes because they'll ask questions and other students can answer the questions. What exactly are we supposed to be doing? And then you don't have to answer it. Someone else can take over and do that. Um, now, I don't, this, I've had a problem seeing the private comments. Um, I bet you, aha, let me go ahead and switch the mode over to my tablet. So if you have the classroom app on your tablet or, or phone, you can access everything there. And I, I notice up here, 
probably can't see it from back there, but there's an, an icon for classroom that's telling me that I have new, two new notifications. And there they are. Here's my private comment. <laughs> What's my grade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is sort of nice because, as much as I like to separate like my professional life from my personal life, sometimes I might forget to do something, and it's nice to, that your students remind you when you're out to dinner one night and you realize that you forgot to upload something. You get the private comment um, in classroom, and you can do it really quick uh, from your device. So, um, so when you say from your device, that also means your phone. Oh yeah, yeah. You can get on your phone too. You can disable the notifications. You can disable them temporarily if you want. Maybe you know you don't want to get notifications um, when you're somewhere important. Um, but so that's really handy. Also, what's nice about the fact that it's integrated with Google so well is it's really easy to do everything on your device. Um, there are some limitations on the device. For example. Uh, so this is the this is the page as it appears on my tablet, um, and you'll notice if I go to the students tab, I see a list of students. But do you notice what I don't see there is a link to add anybody. So I can't invite students from my device. I can do it from the desktop or the laptop, but I can't do it from a phone or a tablet. I don't think that that's integrated with Apple devices yet. Certainly not with Android. Um, so that is one limitation there. But honestly, it's really nice if the students have a code because they can do it themselves. So you just say, go to this URL, enter that code, and you're in. Um, so everything else is fine. You can you can add assignments. And let me go ahead and actually show you how you do that. So if you click the plus button, um, this is slightly different than what it'll look like on the desktop, but it's close enough that you can point. There's a few things you can do. You can add an announcement, an assignment, a question, or you reuse something you've done before if you have a an assignment that you give every week. Um, you don't need to go through the hassle of redoing it every week. You can just reuse an old one. Let me do an announcement. Um, so you can type in your announcement here. I'm just going to put hello. And uh, notice that it gives you an option to share it with uh, different courses. So if you teach several courses and you want to share one announcement with all of your courses, for example, um, I'm, uh, I'm sick today, class is canceled, I don't know. Um, There's a sinkhole. What was that? Class is canceled. There's Class a sinkhole. Is canceled. Everything's canceled. So it gives you the option of adding extra courses if you wanted to do that. But notice that it won't let me, oh, will it let me uncheck that one? Oh wait, this is not interactive. It doesn't let me uncheck this one because this is, I'm, I'm in that class trying to compose this announcement. So I'm obviously sending it there, okay? So let's just get rid of that. And let's go ahead and share it. Send it. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed it. Let me go back to if I edit. Um, now, this is this is not the desktop version, but there's also an option to attach. Um, you can attach various kinds of files, um, or you can even um, attach photos, something from Drive, a link, a video. Uh, you can record your own video if you're on a device. Um, phone out somewhere, record a video, post it immediately to classroom. It's really handy. Um, and also, I should point out, students can do this as well, if you give them the permission. Um, if you give your permission, your students permission to comment, which in my opinion you should, if you want it to be interactive, um, they can also create announcements. Um, and maybe you say, I want you to go out um, to the park and uh, take a photo of something that you know has some certain characteristics. Post it to classroom. They can do this immediately from their phone. Okay, um, so that's really nice. Go ahead and get out of there. Uh, we can also add. Actually, let me go back to the desktop because I feel like most people will be doing this on a laptop. Am I right about that? Okay. Well, the students will be using their phones when they this. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they even use their phones to read textbooks. I don't really understand that. But they have good eyes. Textbooks that, that aren't supposed to be online, but they somehow are. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and add an, add an assignment, or actually, let me create a question. Let's use my favorite question. Um, and you have the option to let students change their answer if they want to, and also uh, reply to each other, which I find to be really nice. 
Uh, you, can, you can adjust the due date. You can have no due date. So if I don't want a due date, take it away. Um, I would not suggest doing that because then your students just won't do it. Right? We all know that. If there's no due date, they're just not going to do it. So um, we'll make tomorrow the due date. And then you can put a time if you want. 11.59 is the default. Um, and then I'm going to go, and you can put files up there if you wanted to. My, what, one thing I like to do is put a video. Um, I use this a lot for my um, art and practice of math course. So I'll put a video about something mathematical. Maybe it's like a couple minutes long. And I'll say, comment on it. What did you notice? You know, and then reply to someone else's comment. Um, and then I'm going to ask a question. So this should be populating in your classroom right now. And now you can go ahead and answer it. And then maybe if someone says they like purple and you hate purple, you can tell them that, right? You can reply to their comment. Now, what's nice is that this isn't just a question. Um, you have the option of grading it. You don't have to grade it, but you have the option of grading it. Um, I'm going to click on done, so we can sort of see. Um, so from the teacher's perspective, I can see all the comments, all the answers, and I can also reply to them. Um, so maybe I also like orange, but I'd like to know what shade, right? Um, and then what I'm going to do is grade these. Or, not grade them, um, when you do the drop down menu for the grade, you can select ungraded, which is, you know, maybe this isn't something you want to grade, but um, I'm going to select ungraded for this. Okay? Um, and now you also have the option of returning these. Why would you want to return something like that? Well, maybe it's because you've made some, some replies, maybe you have a grade you'd like them to see. Maybe you have a comment, right? So again, this is something you can private comment on. I can click on names, type a private comment. So this is a reason you might want to return it, OK? Um, so the grades and the comments are not visible until you return it, or? The comments are, are visible as soon as you click. So if I go to type something, um, it gives me an option to post it. As soon as you post it, the student will be able to see it. And I noticed this the hard way. I went to create a bunch of papers. And I was typing comments as I graded them, but I return everything at the end. And so I was, as I typed the comments and clicked post, and they'd get this comment and, and think, I have no idea what this is talking about. And they'd send me an email, what do you mean by this comment? And I'd say, oh, well, this is supposed to be, you know, you know, in reference to your paper, which I haven't returned yet. You'll get that in a couple of hours. So just keep that in mind. I would go in and, and post the comments at the end. I really wish that. Um, Google had an option to like post later, you know, like I'm done with the comment. I don't want to post it until the grades are out. Uh, they don't have that yet. Another thing they should have. Um, these are the, the the question option is really nice for starting class discussions. I've noticed. And again, this is something your student can do. Okay, they can post a question. Um, and then the assignment. Um, now. You guys remember on this assignment, uh, this is the check-in, you each had your own file that had your name on it. Okay? Um, you can also attach a file, uh, maybe it's just a, a list of the assignment. Right? Maybe it's just the guidelines for the assignment, or it's some paper they're supposed to read, and then type up their own reflection or something. Um, that isn't something that they would type into. This was a file that was mostly blank that the students typed into, and then you grade it. It sort of gives you, gives them a template for what they're supposed to be doing, right? Um, you don't have to do the option where they each get their own paper like that. So, for example, if I go to create an assignment, it gives me a few options if I attach a Google Drive file. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm just going to go to. Um, I'll just I was hoping you were going to pick calculus. <laughs> we can do that, yeah. <laughs> I'll grade it though, is that okay? Um, so, let me say something about what's in, what's in this folder. Um, 
So this is this is from the drive view. It's a little bit easier to see. Um, this is the folder for the workshop. You guys probably don't see all of this stuff. Um, another important thing about this folder, and I cannot stress this enough. You know that you can share Google Drive folders with your students, and we often do it sometimes because that's where you might want to put your course uh, information. This is not a folder that you want to change the permissions for. Um, shaking your head very vehemently, yeah. So um, it is, it's, I'm, I'm, arrow, I'm cursoring on top of this little icon. It already is shared with everyone it needs to be shared with. Google knows what it's doing. Um, you created it, and then it's also shared with any of the, teach, the co teachers. So if you're co-teaching it, or if you have a grader or something like that, you want to share with a colleague so that they can sort of help you out, uh, you can add them there. Um, and then it's shared with them. If you, if you add other people, they have access to everything in this folder now. And one thing that's in the folder that you don't want them to have access to is grades and graded papers. Okay? So, I almost had something catastrophic happen with my calculus class. And I immediately had to delete the folder because I didn't know how to undo this, the sharing. Okay, so don't do that. Um, uh, don't add anybody to this folder. Google knows what it's doing. Okay, um, so you guys just see this file. Well, suddenly I see a bunch of files, right? These are all the papers of your students, by the way. You can access them in Drive as well. Um, and these are all the ones that are already completed. And if you have um, if you have any comments, they'll be on here too. Okay. Um, every time you make an assignment in Classroom, Classroom creates um, a folder with the name of that assignment. So maybe you have 10 assignments over the course of the semester. There will be a folder for each of the assignments, which is handy because that's where all of the completed work is. Okay. Again, don't move these around. Just leave them where they are. Okay. You're also going to get a, um, a folder created called Templates, and of course it says do not edit. And it's because you shouldn't edit it, right? If you edit these templates, it's going to edit the assignments. And sometimes it edits them after the students do their work, which is unfortunate because their work goes poof. Um, so don't do, don't do that. Um, don't edit this folder. Um, uh, this is a folder that I created, okay? And again, you can't see this because it's something I put in the folder. You can put whatever you want in this folder, and as long as you don't mess around with sharing settings, your students aren't going to see it. Like your grade folk, your grade sheet, or anything else that's uh, private. Okay? So this is where I've put a bunch of files that I've that I've made for this class. This is the sort of the blank file. And actually, this check-in file is the one that you opened, except it had your name on it. And you'll also notice that it shows up in templates. Because it is a template for uh, for the for the work that you're giving to your students. Okay, it shows up twice. Don't think, don't try to be clever and delete a file to save space. These are these files are so small; it's not going to matter in the long run. Um, if you do delete one, don't delete the template ones. <laughs> there's a there's sort of a rule of thumb. Um, so back to that. Um, and then I've also put a bunch of a couple of forms in here, and I'll talk about forms in just a minute. Um, so let me close those. Anyway, so what I was doing a minute ago is I was creating an assignment, okay? And I clicked on the Google Drive icon because I want to insert something from Google Drive. I want to insert, insert an assignment. This time, I'm going to insert uh, the check-in again. But now notice that Classroom gives me some options. Students can view the file. Students can edit the file. And students uh, make a copy for each student. The last assignment that I gave you for the check-in, I selected make a copy for each student. When you do that, it literally makes a different copy for each student, and the way you distinguish between them is by the name. Okay? I'm not sure what would happen if you had two students with the same name. I haven't run into that problem. Maybe it, maybe it puts a two out. Let us know if you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their name and parents would be one thing, but their username would be another. Oh, oh sure. sure. Yeah, they probably would know. Yeah, the students would know for sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> what you think? What kind of better group? <laughs> um, so, Students can uh, view the file, this means you know, they can open it in Drive, but they can't make changes to it. Okay? Maybe you've, uh, you've sent a file like this over email, or you, you've received one, you, you open a Google Drive folder, and you can't edit it because it says you don't have permissions, you're not an owner. Okay? And then maybe you request permissions or something. Um, but if you just want to send students a file with some info in it, just do it that way. Okay? 
Okay? If you want them to type in something unique to themselves, use this one, like I did for the, for the journal or something like that. If you want to make it collaborative, you can click <coughs> Students Can Edit the File. So there is one file that everyone is editing. Okay? Um, let me go ahead and just do this for now, Students Can View. Um, and I'm going to... I'm just going to type check in again and assign that. And you'll notice from a student's point of view, when you go to open that assignment, it's just a file that you're looking at and you don't have permission to edit it. They might ask you to save it in your drive, I think is what it should say. Like save, save in my drive or send to my drive, something like that. But again, this isn't something that you would want the students to type into. You would just, it would be a list of List of uh, project assignment or you know assignments uh, details. Okay. Now, when would you use a collaborative thing? Well, it depends. In math, maybe we wouldn't do this very often. And by the way, I don't use this a lot for my upper division math classes because it's it doesn't you know Google doesn't work well with math stuff right now. Um, but you know I use it for my lower division stuff. Right? So if you scroll down here, uh, what did I do with it? Oh, I know what I did. I composed it already, and I didn't post it. So this is something you can't see, uh, but I can because I'm on the teacher view. I've made a couple of drafts. So when you create uh, an assignment or an announcement or a question, you can either post it immediately or assign it immediately, or you can save it for later. And this is useful when you're maybe prepping for the, for the coming week, but you don't want to post everything right away. You just want to get it ready to post later. Um, so this group assignment, I'm going to click on that to remind myself what it was, and yes, it's this collaborative story I want everyone to add to it, and it's due at 12.45, which is a little more than 10 minutes from now. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Assign it. <laughs> so you should see it. It should pop up. Um, are you going to see it? So go ahead and open it, and start typing into it. Type whatever you want. Um, and you should see other people type it into it as well. If there are other people typing into it. <coughs> Let's have it open. I see that. Oh, my. I don't. Hold on. Now I see. Pause. <laughs> this is something I haven't seen. What did I do? I forgot to attach the file. Yeah. I forgot to attach the file. So I'm going to go back. I know exactly which file it is. You guys are like, uh, why is this one <laughs> And then I'm going to click students can edit. Edit file. And now it's ready to go. Now there should be a file there. <laughs> Can you see typing? Now this is actually a feature that I've never used. Wow, it's really making a nice mess. <laughs> <laughs> With a group this big, I imagine it would. This is like ghost writing. This is the part that I love. You love this? Okay. Oh, this is how my kids uh, write on top of each other. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wonderful. I mean, I guess that could be bad, though. Oh, it's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've never used this, so you tell me, how do you turn it in? <clears throat> is there an option to turn it in? Um, yes. Share. I don't see okay. anyone at the top of the screen. Mark yeah, is, Mark is done. Say, say yeah, yeah. So yeah. Done. You can yeah. see everybody. So if you're in the document, you're seeing everybody else. Yeah, right, click on Mark is done. I think that would go back to Okay, interesting. So I have two submissions. <coughs> and um, <coughs> is that in the file? That's my novel. I added it. You added it to the file? Nice. <laughs> Wait, but it doesn't show up in the other ones, though. Because you can 
So, okay. So I'm trying to click on these other ones and it's not letting me. Right. Oh, is that my key? Oh, because it automates. Yeah, I think it's working on it. Okay, so I'm going to go to Drive and look at it for myself in Drive. Um, now notice in Drive, if I go to Assignments and click on it there, there's nothing there because this is not the version that you guys edited. There you go. Oh, it is. Wow. Wow. I'm just trying to catch up with everything. This is great. I have the final word. I like the citation. Good job with the citation, folks. Now, that's lovely. Yeah, so just so you know, there's, in Google Docs, there's the, the tools, research option, and it brings up basically Google search, and I just did a search for giraffe and dragged it into the document, oh, nice. and it's putting the footnote automatically. Oh, that's how, okay. Um, now, notice that if I click on group assignment, ah, oh, that's where Andrew's picture showed up. Okay, this is interesting, okay. So, you guys actually edited the file that I have in assignments because I did not make a separate file for you guys. Okay, so it edits whatever you have. So, if it's something you don't want edited, maybe, maybe you shouldn't use that route, right? Um, it also created a folder for group assignment, right? Because this is an assignment that I created in Classroom, so I have a folder there, but it doesn't have the file that was edited. It has this nice image here. Um, how did you add that, Andrew? When you click it, excuse me, when you click it, um, there was a, an icon. Uh -huh. <coughs> and I clicked on it, and one of the uh, resulting images was the Google Drive. Right? Yeah. So I think you did it in between the time okay. of you adding the four on the final for us okay. to edit, right? I see. Did you so know sort of immediately? He, he submitted. He added the collaborative assignment yeah. file. Right. So was it back here? It was probably in... Do you, do you want to switch it to Apple TV? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think he sees it anymore. Yeah, it's going so basically, when she started the assignment, it didn't have that collaborative writing yeah. file there yet. So we had the option to add our own file. Yeah. So as a student, you just see something that needs to be turned in, right? And if you want to, I mean, you could, you could upload a file that you've already typed just to, or you can choose it in Google Drive, or you can choose it in Google Drive. And it, it puts it in this this folder. <laughs> Somebody else is seeing it. Margaret went a little crazy. That's there. nice. Uh, it puts it in this file, which is the student submission. This is just all the student submissions. So maybe maybe the assignment is to upload a file. Now, if you're if you expect the students to upload an image, you should tell them that. Put it put it in classroom. Don't just name the assignment. Um, you know, creative. Creative image search and leave it at that. They won't know what to do. Say upload a file that, that is fits these criteria. Okay, and that would go right here. There's like a yeah, so I, I unsubmitted and I do see that. So oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to switch to show? Or? Um, if you want. Okay. Put on Apple TV. Apple TV. Okay. You have this is either the collaborative assignment or you can add this to upload your own. So you guys should see that, right? Yeah. Okay. But once you mark it as done, you can't do that anymore. So that's why I wasn't saying it. Really okay. Good. And then you can only comment. But if you want to submit, go back. But you can unsubmit. That's it. Because my question when you submit, does it lock down your file um, from editing? Yes, it does. Unless you un unsubmit it. Oh, yeah. Now, this is something I should point out. Um, when. When a student uploads a file, whether it's whether it's one that you created and they add to, or <coughs> one that they upload, once they submit it, they don't have access to it anymore. Um, now, if it's a file that was in their drive originally, okay, uh, they might be under the impression that they still have it. After all, it's their file, right? But part of the thing that Google did when they, you know, created Classroom was make the system whereby students have access to the paper while they're writing it. Once they submit it, it is not their paper anymore. It belongs to the instructor. The instructor has the rights to it. When it's returned back to them, then they have access to it again. So this makes it impossible for students to, let's say, up, upload an assignment, and then you know maybe it's due by midnight, and then think, oh, well, it's uploaded at midnight, but I'm going to make some changes to it. And then you know, since it's in Drive, all of the changes should be reflected, right? 
you should be able to just change the file and drive, and it should be changed you know, universally, but that's not the way it works. Once it's submitted, they can't change anything. They have to unsubmit it, and then from the teacher's point of view, there's no there's no file there. There's no submission. So then we should tell students, like, maybe recommend them to save it on their own. Yeah. yeah. Make a copy. Yeah. yeah, make a copy of it. Yeah. I mean, they'll get it back once you once you return it. It's not like it's gone forever. It's just if they if they want it in the meantime or something like that. Yeah. Um, good. So, let's see. Any questions so far? Good. Okay. Oh, great. some little blurb up here on the top left hand corner that has items that are due either today or soon. Um, I think as a student you also have the option to view all. Do you guys have that? Yes. So maybe they want to see the, all of the assignments for the entire semester um, and they have the option to do that. Now you as students won't be able to see you know, how many are done and how many aren't, um, but as an instructor you do. Now notice that I'm I'm in a totally different um, on a different page now called work, and I need to go back to the workshop. By the way, this right here, work, that's for all of your courses. So I don't have any outstanding work for any of my other courses, so we don't see it here. But if you guys had three or four courses that you were teaching and you had open work for each one of them, it would all be here, which is kind of nice. Um, because you can see, you know, your workflow, what you need to do, what you've already done. Is that true for the students that they have a few different teachers using Google Classroom? They can see all of them. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same for them. They'd be able to see all of them. Um, and I think in K through 12, Classroom is um, used quite a lot. Uh, the reason I know this is because when I was trying to clean up the iPads here, I had I used these for the workshop we ran a couple of weeks ago, and these middle school kids were using them for something and they wanted to share their work with themselves. So they logged into their Google accounts. Um, and I went to Classroom to make sure there weren't any accounts already loaded in. And sure enough, there were, and the, the accounts popped up immediately. And you can see all of these courses for the students. So um, they, they certainly do use them a lot. Um, now, the calendar, so if you go to the About tab and scroll down, it gives you a couple of options for calendar. Um, <coughs> View in Classroom or open in Google Calendar. Um, you can click open in Google Calendar. It's just going to open another tab with your Google Calendar in it. So I'm just going to go to my calendar. Um, and you'll notice if you open your calendar, you're going to see that it added a folder. I mean, it added a calendar. Okay? This is something that Classroom creates. I didn't have to do this. Um, and so any assignment that you put up in Classroom is going to appear on this calendar. You don't have to double it up which is really nice, it has the, the time and data to do, okay? This is automatically done in Classroom. Um, now, I can also, let me maybe say I want to add something here tomorrow. Uh, maybe there's a discussion or something. Let me add it to the workshop calendar, create that event. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So you'll see it's an all-day event, right? And you might think, this should also show up in Classroom, right? I added it from Calendar, but it doesn't. This is really annoying. Um, another thing that I would, I would change about it. I told you guys there were some cons. So if I go view the calendar in Classroom, can you guys see over there? Yeah, we can. Okay. Close enough. You're all right. Close enough. Um, you'll see that there's some stuff up here, but all, all of this stuff was what I added from Classroom, right? It doesn't have the stuff I added from, from Google Calendar. So there's not a two-way communication. Um, I imagine at some point they'll do that, but they haven't yet. Okay? Um, so just keep that in mind. You can add items to the calendar. Your students will be able to see those items in their calendar, but they won't be able to see them in Classroom. Okay? So if I were you, I would just advise students to look at the calendar in Google Calendar. Okay? Um, I make my students get used to this in the first day of class. 
hey, I have a course calendar for you guys. All of your assignments will be there. All of the due dates and everything important will be there. Information about office hours, links to virtual office hours. Really important to make sure you are comfortable with it. And that way, anything that you add will show up there. Okay? Um, and, and this is something that's shared with the students. So you guys should see this now, shouldn't you? The calendar, if you have it open. It's there. You just have to go to the other calendar. Oh, yeah, right. Down here. Other calendars. Because they're not on there, so I'll be there. Yeah. But then you can, um, you can, can you drag it back? You can't bring it up, can you? No. Ah, uh, okay. So it's down here. It is, because you're the owner of the calendar, so it's under Okay. Yeah, because it's my calendar. Right. Important. Okay. Um, so, those are two things with calendars. Now, I wanted to show a couple of things, um, how do you do with other Google type products? Um, one of them is handy in the calendar. So you'll notice, if you go to the calendar, there um, you should see in your calendar a link for virtual office hours. Um, does anybody use Google Hangouts for office hours? Um, it's handy, you know, if you can't, if you don't want to be on campus or you can't be on campus and a student has a pressing question and it can easily be answered virtually, um, it's really handy. So um, if you have the calendar open, you can click on this event and you should see a link to join the office hours. If you've used Google Hangouts before for anything, that means that you would have installed a, an extension or a plugin or something. Right, and, and those come with Chrome. So if you're using Chrome, you don't have to install it. Oh, okay, Chrome is the Chrome browser. Okay. Um, so you just click on this and it will connect you. So I'm going to click on it. So as the instructor, I also have to click on it to open it up. And it opens up a, a window in Hangouts. I'm going to mute. So we don't have any kind of feedback. Yeah. Feedback is the word you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Am I muted? Yes, I'm muted. Um, now, Kaylee, you have yours open, right? It's good. Yeah, but that's your calendar. We're almost there. Oh, okay. One other person should click on it and mute your, mute your, your speakers. Is there space in there? Oh. Okay. So there's two of us here. Okay. And you know, I think that Hangouts. <laughs> I think that Hangouts supports up to ten people currently. Fifteen. Fifteen now. Awesome. Which is quite a lot. Um. Now, managing fifteen people in office hours this way is not easy. Everybody talks over each other, um, so it's nice to have some sort of like a hand raising system or something like that. Um, but this is handy, just for, I mean, I would do a group of like three or four, that's manageable. Or tell several students to all crowd around one laptop, um, then it's a little bit more manageable. Now we have three, four, wonderful, now we're all in. Okay, so that's how you would do this. Um, again, it's, it's very handy. And um, I think even after I leave, so let me leave and let's see, can you guys still see each other? Those of you with it open? Yes. Yep. Awesome. You're still in. So you can use this to, um, even if you're not there, open it up for, I mean, maybe you shouldn't call it office hours, you should just call it like study group or something. Um, and you can have some sort of study group, you could put it in your calendar as an event, and then students have like a central place to go to, they can click on a link and all be together, right? Um, so it's really nice for facilitating that. You don't have to be part of it if you don't want to. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes. Uh, is there a technical limit on how many you can have besides the what, 15 you said? What if 10 classes were using the same time block? Would there be a problem? No, because the time blocks are specific to each classroom. So in other words, when she brought that up and it had a link that was specific to that block and to that classroom. Does that make sense? So there's no peak load issues. Nothing oh, I see. Like if you're setting up a conference call, you have to schedule the conference call. Okay, I see what you're saying. So each invite has its own room to meet in. Basically, Google's handling all of, all of that traffic. Okay, so, so if 50 of us wanted to do this at the same time, we will run into a problem. Correct. As long as you're not all in this, there could be limitations with that, for example, history. Well, but on campus, let's say we were. You may be fine. 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 You
to just increase the limit on Google Hangouts to 25 people. Oh, wow. So 25 people can be online at the same time looking at each other. Wow. And, if you, and then if you did it on Google Hangouts on air, you could just, it, it would stream. And that anybody is, could view it, but they wouldn't necessarily be able to participate. Yeah. I've done that, and that's like a live sort of uh, broadcast. Yes. And um, there's no interaction with the students, but students uh, can go in and view it live. And then I think you can post it later, can't you? There's also a chat. <clears throat> oh, okay. So they can chat by. Okay. So it records automatically on to YouTube when you do Google Hangouts on air. So instantly it's recording to YouTube, and you could set your privacy settings on it. Nice. And you could have, I think on Hangouts on Air, you could have 15 people in the room interacting. Okay. But anybody with a link can view it. Okay. Okay. Nice. So I was going to take a step back. So what are the things for which you use Google Classroom, and what are the things for which you use Moodle, and, and mm -hmm. use balance that? Well, I haven't talked about grading yet, so let me let me go, because grading is a little bit, I mean, Moodle's nice for grading because you can you can tell Moodle, this is how I want my final grade to be calculated, and as you put grades in, it calculates the grades and students can see it. Um, they, as far as I know, there's not a way to um, let students view their overall grade in classroom. They can view grades for individual assignments, but unless you expect them to read the syllabus and know how the grades calculated and <laughs> do that <laughs> on their own. They're going to be coming to you and asking what the final grade is a lot. Um, so that was an issue. Um, also, uh, what were the other things? Moodle's better for, um, you know, if you want to set up a certain type of class forum or something. Moodle has all different kinds of forums you can set up, where they post one, one discussion topic, where they can post multiple, where they can um, post their own and then respond to others. You know, you can set up all those different features. On this one, you just have the question option, right? And students only post one answer to the question. They can't uh, respond multiple times, although they can reply to each other. Um, it is easy to, um, to grade in the browser, which is nice, but again, you have to have uh, Wi-Fi access for this or some kind of network access. I, could, I, I mean, I guess you do for, for Moodle as well. Right. Um, now, uh, feedback files. I don't know what to do feedback files here. So I, I've gotten into voice grading recently, so I do a lot of voice grading. And then on Moodle, I'll up, upload the, the PDF and the MP4 feedback files. And I can upload them, thanks to Carl, in a batch. <laughs> and then uh, Moodle knows how to assign them to the students. Uh, I can't do that here. So if that's something you're interested in is feedback files, I don't know that it would be handy. <coughs> Although you can set up separate Google Drive folders for your students. And I've done this before at the beginning of the semester. Um, I'll say, each of you in your drive should have a folder with your name on it. That's where I'm going to put all of the personal files between me and you. Okay, so if you want to put feedback files there, the students have access to them, but nobody else does. Um, so those are sort of some limitations. And the grading, I guess, is a big issue. That's a bigger issue, I think, keeping track of grades uh, you know, for the course. Um, now, I was going to show you guys. Uh, so on, let me do the check-in with all the... I'll just do this one. So I already graded these, supposedly. If you click on the gear icon up here, you might be wondering, how do you get those grades? Um, you can either copy the grades into a Google Sheet, which is Google's version of Excel, sort of. It's a spreadsheet system in Google. Or you can download the grades. Um, and it gives you the option to either download all of your grades or download just the grades uh, that you have for this assignment. Okay, and. You know, if you download the grades, it just opens up a, C, a CSV file at the bottom, and then you can copy and paste. Or, since it's already a CSV file, you can change the headings, whatever it needs to be, to make Moodle happy, and then upload to Moodle, if that's where you want to do your grades. Um, so it does make sense to have sort of two platforms. Maybe you tell your students, we're going to use Moodle for just the grading issue, and we're going to use Classroom for everything that I want to share with you. Okay. Um, speaking of sharing, are there questions about grades, by the way? I mean, this is the way that I always did it, was downloaded to a CSV file. I had a different question uh -huh. about using Moodle and, and this at the same time. So you, you're finding you're just keeping grades on Moodle and using this for everything else? Well, it depends on, so I do different things for different classes. Because it seems like the, the interface here is a stream. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted to set up a bunch of assignments in the beginning of class, would they just then mm -hmm. go way down below and mm -hmm. students never see them? They would, there? yeah. Now you do have the option in classroom to um, 
So you go to the stream, and maybe there's an important announcement at the bottom and you want students to see it. You can click on the three dots and choose move to top. And now this is at the top of the stream. So it, I mean, that's nice if you can bring something from the bottom up to the top or whatever. But you don't have any, other than that, you don't have freedom to move these around. You can't just drag them. There seems sort of silly that you can't, but right now you can't do that. And also, yeah, you can't create blocks like you can in Moodle. Like I have a block for each unit. Can't do that here. It's interesting because it's a totally different interaction mm -hmm. paradigm. It's like just paying attention to your <coughs> Facebook stream or whatever stream is going on, and it's a really different way of interacting with people. And I think it could have some real drawbacks if you don't. So that, I mean, it's like students don't have to plan as much. Everything's coming up and telling them what to do when. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good point, and I don't. I mean. I haven't ever asked my students like to give me feedback, you know, on this, you know, comparison to Moodle. I should do that to see what they think about it. Um, I have a feeling that they might like the stream better because they're used to streams, you know. That's something that they like. I like the organizational aspect of putting things in pods uh, in Moodle, and that way it's organized. <laughs> but maybe they're just not like that. I don't know. Um, so uh, one one little handy thing was sharing. Um, now, if, this is only if you use Chrome for a browser. Um, so if you are, you, a lot of you probably use Safari. So if you use Safari, I apologize. Is there anybody using Chrome? Maybe I should even bring this up. A few, a few people. Okay, good. Yeah. You use Chrome on Apple. Um, so uh, it, you have to be signed into your Chrome browser under your St. Mary's account to do this. Okay. You'll notice I have two Chrome browsers open. This one is my St. Mary's, and that one is my personal browser. And I was going to show you guys this handy extension. So if you just go to a Google chat bar, it's Ravi Shankar's birthday today, apparently. Um, what was that? Oh, is it? Wonderful. Um, so um, what is this called? Uh, Google Classroom. Um, classroom with three S's. Uh, Share. Share button. It's an extension. Share to classroom. Um, and it should come up uh, in chrome.google.com. And if you select that, it's going to give you the option to add it. I already have mine added. You need to do this from your in your St. Mary's login. If you don't, it, it won't be able to communicate with, um, with the classroom. So I already have it added, and once the, once the extension is added, it's up here in your bar. Um, and then maybe I want to um, search for hippos and find an image of a hippo. I don't know why I thought, oh, that one looks great. So, um, and then what I'm going to do is click this share to classroom, and now it's communicating. Putting up, it says, which classroom do you want? I want that one. Um, do you want to make it an announcement, or what do you want to do with it? Um, now, if you click push to students, this is only going to work if they're if they also have the extension. And you, I don't think that you can realistically expect that your students are all going to have the extension because they probably don't all use Chrome. So I would not use that one. Um, I'm just want to make an announcement about those. Okay. Um, so and then post it. And then once it's posted, now notice I'm not doing this in Classroom. This is just in the browser. And that's really handy because you don't have to have Classroom open. A lot of times I'll be, you know, I use Feedly to read my news. Or it doesn't matter what I'm doing as long as I'm doing it in Chrome. And I might find an article that I want to share with my students. I don't want to go open up a Classroom browser and do it that way. I just want to push it from the actual window that I'm working in, you know, right there. Um, and I can do that. And then there's a button to view it if you want to view it in Classroom. And it opens up the window. And there it is. So that's really handy, especially if you're someone that likes to, you know, share articles and whatnot with students a lot like I do. Questions about that? I have a list of things that I was going to talk about. Let me make sure I get all of them. So there are no, no, no such things as plugins for image galleries or anything mm -hmm. like that, right? Uh, not that I know of. You don't add additional things that are going to stream students in the power. You can't add them or nothing. No, you can't do that. And, uh, 
that's another, I mean, if, if you could, maybe you, you could organize your class a little bit better, right? Maybe you have, you want to have, a, you want to have this organized with your, you, whatever unit you're working on. And at this point, that's not an option. I imagine in the future that they will update that, but at this point they haven't. Yeah. And yeah, image galleries, not that I know of. You can add, you know, YouTube videos, but that's about it. Did I see a hand? No? Okay. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to show you guys uh, one more final little trick. And that is, I'm going to go to my folder where I keep everything, and I'm going to make a, a, new, a new Google form. Uh, this is something I do at the beginning of every semester to make an attendance sheets on my tablet. I've, I've gone paperless with attendance and all of that stuff. Um, so this is good for participation too. Attendance and participation. And um, you know you might want to record the date. So after after we have this going you'll see what's going on here. Um, so I'm making a form, and this is for for instructors' use only, by the way. This is not for something you're going to give to your students. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do uh, the multiple choice grid, and then I'm going to put the names of my cats in here because why not, right? And then. Uh, These are the three options that I leave for attendance. They're either there, they're late, or um, they're not there. Um, and then what I can do is I'm going to duplicate this for participation, except I'm going to call this one excellent. Good. And fair. And then you can add other options. You can add as many as you want. And I'm going to share this as a link with myself only. Okay? Now, I have this link, and because I, um, I use Chrome on my tablet, but only with my personal account, I'm going to go ahead and open this link in, I have a Chrome tab open, my personal account, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tablet. There we go. Go to Chrome. And I'm going to tell Chrome to open up recent tabs. And you'll see this is my laptop. And my desktop is down here. That's my office though. I'm going to choose this guy. And it opens up that tab that I just made on my desktop because they're talking to each other. And I'm going to tell my tablet that I want to make a little desktop icon for this so I can open it um, whenever I want to. Add to home screen. Let's call it cats because that's what they are. <laughs> and now I have a shortcut right there. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here and put it in this folder that I already have for attendance. This is what I do when I go into classes. I click on this little icon and I say, okay, who's here? Well, this is the date. It's the 7th. Yep, Matrix is here. Misu is late and Shasta is absent. And then, you know, always good attendance, always good participation from this one. Not from that one, though. Yeah, and then you can have an option for apps or whatever. And then you submit. Now, once you submit, what's really handy about this is that it's all saved. You can put this away and, and you don't have to do anything with it. And if I go back to, um, if I go back, actually, I'll just go back here. If I go back to my Google Drive folder, it's all there. Yeah. So if I click on Responses, uh -oh. I did submit that, right? Okay, let's pretend I submitted it. <laughs> um, hmm? um, I'm 
Yeah. 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 I have experienced some small delay. Forms. Oh, have you? Yes. Oh, there it goes. I think it just didn't. It, it didn't pop you. Yeah. So, um, with the new Google Forms, you can either view it in the browser like this and, and see the, the breakdown. Now, this is only one response, or you can say just push it to a spreadsheet, create a new spreadsheet, and then every single time you want to view your attendance, you go into your Google Drive folder. And there's, there's a, uh, didn't I just put that in there? Cats? There it is. It is oh, it just popped up. <laughs> just took a second. There is a lag, yeah. And then there it is. So you don't have to worry about saving it or anything. It, it all shows up and you can keep track of attendance that way. And it's paperless. And you can keep track of participation too. Um, I had a really hard time trying to find a way to do that, but it's all worked out now. Um, I find that to be really handy. So, um, I've gone over a lot of things <laughs> in sort of like a mishmash way. Are there any questions about any of this stuff? <coughs> yes, sir. In terms of uh, handling quantitative type problems, mm -hmm. spreadsheets make sense. Is this only support the Google spreadsheet? When you say this, you mean uh, Classroom? Yeah, so it um, it will push data to a Google spreadsheet in, in uh, Sheets, okay. um, but then you can export that as, a, as an Excel file. And then there's, there's no auto grading feature in this, right? You had the homework up early. Mm -hmm. Like you have to physically grade it yourself, which is fine. Mm -hmm. What if you have quantitative problems or maybe like um, it doesn't have any of that. No, there's no, it doesn't have an ability to check and interpret the data um, And in fact, forms doesn't do that either. Um, well, I don't know. You can sort of do with forms when you get a set of data. Yeah. It just goes in a sheet and you have to do something. Can you can you tell it what's right and what's wrong though? Well, for me personally, I found it so annoying it wasn't working. But I transferred the data from Google Sheets to Excel, which you can do a lot of great in Excel, but you have to transfer it. The physical transfer process was more work. Yeah, that's a nightmare. I'm I'm going to do another workshop on another date about um, in-class response systems, and there are some ways to do it there. Um, especially if you do it in class, like do a quick quiz, like yeah, right. takes 30 seconds, and then it does some way to check, check the answers. Um, so it is auto graded, but this doesn't have to be. I, I was wondering, I think some of them may need to go over. Okay, to okay. So okay. I'm, I'm wondering if you might be able to stick around for a few sure. minutes if people yeah. have specific questions afterwards. But I would like to take a chance as a group to thank Kristen so much for. Okay.